In this video, we are going to talk about the graphs of exponential functions. So I'm going to pick any number I want to for x, plug it into my function, and find my y. So I will get a list of points. Let's try a few. If I pick 0 for x, my f at x, f at 0, is just my y. So y is going to equal 3 to the 0. And anything to the 0 power is just 1. If I pick 1 for x, I will have y is equal to 3 to the first. Well, 3 to the first is just 3. If I pick 2, I will have 3 squared, which will be 9. What if I pick a negative number? Negative 1. Well, that will be 3 to the negative 1. Now, remember your rules for exponents. Whenever you have a negative exponent, you can move that term to the denominator. So now, instead of 3 to the negative 1, it's 1 over 3 to the first, which is simply 1 third. If I pick negative 2 for my x, my y will equal 3 to the negative 2, which is equal to 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. So let's plot a few of these points. So when I plugged in negative 3, I got 1 27th. When I plugged in negative 2, 1 ninth. Negative 1, 1 third. When I plugged in 0, this is an important point. When I plugged in 0, I got 1. When x was 1, y, or my function was 3. When x was 2, my function is 9. And you can see this increases very quickly. So I can draw my curve. And that is the graph of y equals 3 to the x. Now let's look at this exponential fun function. g of x equals 1 third to the x. Well, let's just jot down a few points again. If I plug in 0 for my x, well, 1 third to the 0, anything to the 0 power is just 1. If I plug in 1, I will have 1 third to the first, which is simply 1 third. If I plug in 2, I will get 1 third to the second which is 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. Let's plug in some negative numbers. If I plug in negative 1, now be careful with these negative exponents, I will have 1 third in parentheses to the negative 1. That is the same thing as 3 over 1 to the first. I had a negative exponent. So I did move the term that was in the numerator to the denominator. And what was in the denominator came to the numerator. So 1 third to the negative 1 is the same thing as 3 over 1 to the first, which 3 to the first is just 3. If I plug in negative 2, I will have 1 third to the negative 2, which is the same thing as 3 over 1 to the positive 2, which is positive 9. Let's graph a few of these points. Negative 3, 27 will not fit on this graph. But then I have negative 2, positive 9, negative 1, 3, 0, 1. That's an important point in exponential functions. 1, and then just 1 third. So I barely go up, 2 and 1 ninth, 3 and 1 27th. So let's draw this curve. And that is the graph of g of x equals 1 third to the x. So these are two examples of an exponential graph. We have y is equal to 3 to the x. This is known as a growth function. And you see it grows very, very quickly. It increases rapidly. 
We also have the graph y is equal to one-third to the x. This is a decay function. So when the base is a fraction, my graph will be decreasing, and it is called the decay function. Now notice the point 0, 1. When I have an exponential function, of course the variable is in the exponent. When I plug in 0 for this variable, 3 to the 0, or either 1 third to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. So before any shifts take place, all of these functions will go through the point 0, 1. Okay, I have plotted a few points for the exponential graph 2 to the x. And so sure enough, 2 to the 0, that will be 1. When x is 1, 2 to the first is 2. When x is 2, 2 to the second is 4. When x is 3, 2 to the third is 8. And I have plotted a few points. Well, let's talk about their shifts. These shifts occur the same way our shifts did for parabolas and all of our other functions. Exponential functions shift the same way. The first shift I'm going to talk about is f of x equals 2 to the negative x. I have put the negative within the variable. That is a reflection across the y-axis. So it's just like a mirrored image across the y-axis because the negative is in there with the x. Let's look at another function. What do you think will happen with this function? f of x equals negative 2 to the x. That is going to be a reflection across the x-axis with a negative in front there. The function f of x equals negative 2 to the negative x. That has two shifts. It will be reflected over the x-axis and also over the y-axis. So that is part of the shift. That is the reflection over the y-axis, but we're not done. We now have to turn it upside down and reflect it over the x-axis. And so now we have the f of x is equal to negative 2 to the negative x. Now, if I have the function f of x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1, you should know that my graph, I will take my graph, and it will just shift up one place. And the last shift, if I have f of x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1, this is a right or a left, a horizontal shift. Be careful with the sign, though. I will take my graph, and I will shift all my points to the left 1. And I could, of course, use my graphing calculator and type in 2 to the x, graph it, and I will see my exponential function. If I want to see a shift, I could type in 2 to the x plus 1, that will be a vertical shift. It will send my graph up one unit. If I want to see a right or left shift, be careful. Make sure you put this in parentheses. So if I want to see 2 to the x minus 5, and that should be a horizontal shift, and it should go to the right 5. Let's check it out. And there it went, to the right 5. Okay, good luck understanding your shifts.